And also, I want to talk about being a jack of all trades, which is something that a lot of people uh, will kind of resonate towards. But I highly suggest that you find a concentration or a understanding. So if you're a healer, you're going to be focused on healing your, uh, your yourself and the people around you, the people that you're assisting, whether you're doing it as client work or you're doing it with other people. Um, if you're a communicator, then you're going to be writing a lot or speaking um, and channeling messages. If you're a guardian, you're going to be actually battling and defending grids and maintaining certain structures within the ethereal realms. If you're a warrior, you're going to be doing and performing banishings, exorcisms, cleansings, uh, rejuvenation processes, and you're going to be going to battle essentially against the dark forces and the forces that are trying to subjugate humanity. So there are so many different types. So let's talk about the guardian first. Um, definitely the, the energetic guardian is one to be known. And um, I've added a few of these different types inside of the school. So you can actually go ahead and change your discipline. For those of you that haven't done this already, I'm going to show you a uh, plan. And we're going to be adding a lot more disciplines as we basically pioneer and develop them. Um, but here you just go into this, this section over here and click discipline. And then you can you can change your discipline, and we have a, a variety of different choices. Okay, so the energetic guardian is the being of light or the higher consciousness being, whom can reshape and bend light, magic, and the four elements: earth, water, fire, air, and then of course aether or ether, as well as electricity, magnetism, g-force, dark matter, dark energies, and various other multi-dimensional realms of consciousness and energetics. So basically the way that I have structured this is the energetic guardian is definitely the individual who has reached the pinnacle of their masterhood or of their, their development. Now, reaching this pinnacle doesn't mean that you've necessarily stopped in your evolution. It just means that you've mastered all of the other phases to a certain point, which is why you're bestowed the rank of guardian or why you're bestowed this responsibility, which is to be a guardian. So a lot of people will say, well, how do you know if you're bestowed a guardian or how do you really understand your type? Well, you're going to have to look and see through the characteristics. What kind of being do you most resonate with? What kind of being are you most like? And what kind of energy are you putting off in your day-to-day -day life? And depending on how you are perceived or how you are acting in your life and in what you're creating, this is going to definitely illustrate the type of being that you are. So an energetic guardian is someone who's a magical gatekeeper. They're going to be almost holding these portals and these dimensions in tune with the creations around them. So they're, they're a higher dimensional bridge of light codes, of information, of spirituality, of energy, of magic. And as a guardian, you're definitely someone that's going to be um, defending these higher celestial realms when they are under attack or when they're being messed with through these dark forces. So it's really important because the energetic warrior is, is someone that also has the mastery. So this is just, you know, as, as you're becoming an energetic warrior, basically a lot of people, this is a, this is a already an advanced level of a, of a classification of a being. When you become a warrior is when you stand for the truth and you dismiss the lower frequencies and you claim that and you claim that I'm going to stand in your in my power and you don't give in to the corruption of the matrix. Many people have a hard time with this. They have a hard time shining their light because they're afraid of what other people are going to think or how they're going to be attacked psychically or physically. They don't know how to hold their power. Um, they don't know how to, you know, hold the power of the elements or create shields. Haven't mastered the preliminaries such as healing, divination, and basic psychic abilities. So to become an energetic warrior means to hold your light despite the rising darkness in the world and in your society or around you. So to become an energetic warrior is to really become your divine self. And it takes a lot of practice. But that's why we have these teachings and these lessons is to teach you about elemental mastery, healing, divination, and other psychic abilities. So we also have divine messengers. Now, this is one of the first ability or one of the first kinds of things that will definitely unlock, which is 
an outpouring of spiritual information coming from your spirit once you awaken. Once you awaken, you just seem to know or want to know all kinds of information on magic, on consciousness and spirituality, on meditation, on other realms, on astral travel and dreams and lucid dreaming. So you're just going to become a messenger. You're a divine messenger. That's one of the first, first uh, steps is to become a conduit of information. It's like something turns on one day. You know, you're dormant your whole life and one day you turn on and you're lit up and you, you're turned on like a Christmas tree because the eye, because the light behind your eyes is now glowing. So because of this, you now have access to the infinite realms of consciousness and information. And you may not even know this until someone tells you this outright. But um, it's, you know, one, one great way I see people tap into their divine messenger abilities is when they are going to sleep. Uh, if, if you fall asleep and you start thinking of things and you start getting all this information, well, actually, that's your, your spiritual self or your subconscious telling you all this information that you were not conscious of um, previously. But now that your mind is quieted down, you can get this information. So to tap into your divine messenger ability is a super um, really understandable field of consciousness. You become a field of consciousness where you can now resonate information codes back and forth from other sources beyond just your logical mind. You can now receive information codes because you are the information field. So this is what it means to be a divine messenger is to always be receiving as an information field and understand and recognize that at the highest, highest, highest levels of consciousness, there is literally just strings of information everywhere, which is why I refer to it as codes, because they are actually codes and everything can be broken down into these etheric codes. From the very bodies that we inhabit to the world around us, it is codes and information. And you can decode that information by becoming a divine messenger. Understand it is very magical. So it does look like these celestial uh, gears, really, is what it is. They're celestial gears and they rotate kind of like sacred geometry. And that has to do a lot with what we are inside of, which is a quantum computer or inside of this matrix machine. So it gets really, really, really um, interesting as we go higher and higher into the dimensions. We see with this celestial mechanics or this celestial machine all around us that this is an intricately woven fabric of light and information in a, a live electrical machine. Um, and we can pierce the veil. So that's a whole other concept. Energy healer. Another really basic ability that this is one of the first abilities people begin to manifest. They begin the ability of, of manifesting healing powers. Maybe they can just heal themselves from getting sick, or maybe they don't get sick. Or maybe they, they touch their friends and their family and they can make their family feel better. Or they begin to develop Reiki abilities so they can just place their hands on people and they can feel hot, tingly energy, warmth, light, um, healing coming out of their body just from their thought. So energy healing is a great ability. Um, a lot of people are very, very powerful healers. Healing is not to be underestimated because at advanced levels, let me tell you, healing is one of the most powerful abilities. What would you rather do? Would you rather attack and slay the demons as an energetic warrior or heal them into a completely benevolent spirit? There are two ways of operating against the enemy, two different ways. One is to send it back to nothingness. The second way is to heal it and to transmute it back into the light. So there are two different ways for two different personalities. There are two different spirits, types. A real guardian, as I talked about, an energetic guardian would have mastered healing and the warriorship. So they would know when some being needs healing and when they need to bring out the light sword. And that's an important thing to distinguish because healing is extremely powerful. And actually, you can heal a lot more of the evil than we have been told. So what I want you to practice, this is a really powerful technique that I will share with you right now. This is something that I do um, pretty consistently is whenever you go out into nature, because nature always needs healing. I want you to establish your grid. Once you get out there, you establish your grid, you connect in, you start to meditate and energize your, your aura. And once you've sufficiently connected in, 
Send pulse waves of healing to everything around you from, from the entire world around you, okay? From your spirit to all of the beings, all of the energies, the sky, the ground, the trees, um, the ocean if you're near an ocean or the mountains if you're near mountains, even the cities or the plains, the people, the animals, the dogs, send healing energies to everything. Imagine a massive, massive orb of light energy coming out of you as it's growing and growing and growing to heal everything. Imagine it fixing the code, repairing it, making it flow in the most magical, most celestial, most divine way possible. Imagine that there is magic flowing everywhere and then summon and bring the powers of the elements from the elements of fire, water, earth, air, and aether. Bring that energy and heal everything and everyone around you with this magical power. So that's the full potential of an energetic healer realized to its max ability. At its lowest ability or its, its uh, you know most beginning levels, it's going to be healing small things. Um, but even that's not to be ignored because it's very powerful. You can even heal objects. You can heal, you know, when you when you are about to eat a meal or about to drink something, you can heal the, the code and the energies of that. You can heal your fruit. You can heal your pets um, simply by channeling and practicing the energy healing techniques. This is powerful. So practice that ability as well. And uh, healing is something to be reveled. Empaths, empath, this is another um, really, really, really simple and basic ability that develops, which is the ability of empathy to be able to feel and read other people's emotions or to see and to interpret their emotions, to feel how they're feeling, to receive the input signals, the energetic codes, because everything is information. Even emotions are information. So to receive the information and the energy from other people is empathy. and. To be able to read other people's emotions is a very highly useful skill. You can see who is dangerous and who's not, who's angry, who's peaceful, who's a friend or who's a foe. In a life or death situation, empathy is very powerful because you'll be able to tell who is someone that is dangerous and who's someone that's going to leave you alone. Empathy can also be overused, meaning that you can give out too much of your energy or be drained by other people. So you need to learn how to have boundaries. That's most commonly what we find in today's society is a lot of empaths that don't know how to control their empathy. But understand that your empathy is a superpower. It's a gift of super sensitivity, a gift of able to read other people's auras and frequencies. If you have empathy, you can become all the way up to an energetic guardian and even beyond, which we're going to talk about. Because this is the base ability, empathy and healing. You know, healing manifests after empathy, but empathy is the first. And even, even beginning levels of psychic ability, the first stages will be simple synchronicities or simple um, telepathic communications. Anything that happens accidentally or you start to magnetize more synchronicities, you're starting to become empathic with the universe with the universal supercomputer and the people around you. So empathy is very powerful. It can help you with social situations. It can help you with personal relationships. It can help you with cultivating your world and what you want to build. It can also help you become a more loving based being, just more empathic, more loving, more giving. You can really start to see how other people you know, perceive the world. However, you also don't want to get lost in other people's realities or other people's dimensions. And this is a huge trap for the empath, which is where someone gets lost in their oversensitive energies. So that's when we want to become not just a healer, but also an energetic warrior. The healer is going to be someone that's going to be able to um, heal themselves from draining people and draining circumstances and to be able to protect themselves. <clears throat> So we did talk about the energetic guardian, but it's also referred to as homo luminous. Now, homo luminous is technically all of the above, but homo luminous definitely manifests the most in homo uh, divinus or homo divinicus, 
which is the energetic warrior who is graduated into the final stages of spiritual evolution in the physical form and is becoming more and more translucent, magical and divine by the day. This energy form often evolves into higher light planes and, be, and protects as a watcher, keeper, and guardian of the grid lines and dimensions. A true vanquisher of evil, they are tasked with the discovery, keeping, balancing, and maintaining of the magical grids, as well as discovering and the teaching of higher magics and teaching newer souls, spirits, and other divine intelligences on the proper path towards spiritual evolution and liberation. So to be a guardian is to not just be a teacher, um, but to also be discovering new magical potential and new possibilities and new dimensions. And this is truly when you are coming towards your homo luminous capabilities. And this is actually, you know, if I'm um, going to put my theory here, this is what we were before we came into the simulation. This is what we are, what we have always been. But this is truly who we are beyond this matrix is homo luminous. And that's become more and more apparent by the day. I mean, we are an entire world, so we do have trees on top of our heads. We are entirely vast celestial beings. So to have just a fraction of your consciousness inside of the matrix, and then to be experiencing the matrix in this, this uh, vastly limited form, you know, and to now bring homo divinus or homo luminous into this matrix simulation, that is when things start to get interesting. That's when we really see can we play this game with our full selves while being inside incarnated a very tiny percentage of our actual self? So I talk about um, Homo Luminous and Homo Divinus in my book, Homo Luminous, the Divine Blueprint. And this is another image of Homo Luminous, which is truly a celestial being. Okay, so this physical form is just a, a shadow, a fragment of the divine radiance around. And this divine radiance is the aura which manifests all of the power, all of the spirit. So if you're ever wondering why some people are successful, some people are just seem to like get the best luck. Some people just seem to just have everything perfect in their world. Well, first of all, it's not perfect. It's through the transmutation and the alchemy process of becoming homoluminous. Now, this is basically possible for anyone that understands that it's possible. But for those people that dismiss it, which, you know, we could call the NPCs, they're never going to become this because they never open themselves up to this possibility. But once you do open yourself up to the celestial possibility, you have an unlimited potential of what you can do with your incarnation. And uh, there is no force, no tyrannical force, no evil force. Um, no restrictive force that can bind you or control you inside of here. So we also have intuitive creators. And this is another, you know, um, discipline that we talked about. But we're going to add more disciplines as we talk about. But an intuitive creator is just someone who's really just a channeler of life. They really just channel life. They channel their intuition. Intuition is a superpower. It's the power of omniscience. That is not to be taken lightly. Omniscience is the power to know everything. So omniscience and intuition is an extremely potent ability. Now, what we've seen in this world is people taking the concept of intuition and fluffing it to make it sound like it's very fluffy and new agey and soft when intuition is the literal power of a god or a goddess. So that's what I find very funny in our society is that that happens a lot with the intuition and the new age channelings and, and whatnot. But intuition is actually a divine power. So it needs to be treated with serious respect because it's very, very potent. If you knew everything, well, there wouldn't be much challenge in the world. Now, obviously, people's levels of intuition need to be developed. But there are at certain points where you do become so omniscient. If you've ever taken a very high dose of psychedelics, you know what I'm talking about. You just know everything. In fact, you're overflowing with so much information. It's like you're going to pop. So... To be an, an intuitive channel or an intuitive creator is to just be living life and creating off your intuition, which is what I recommend a lot of people do. You know, in this new, in this new, in this modern society, which is becoming more technological, um, but there's also a benefit to that. There's Web 3.0, which is an, allowing creators to become their own, uh, their their own, you know, commission, 
So they, they are able to create their art. There's a huge thing with NFTs right now where people are creating digital art and posting it online and selling that and making a very good income, making millions of dollars, making even more by channeling their intuition. So I really think as creators, um, you know, decentralized social media, decentralized platforms with your intuition, there is no limit. You can reach whatever level of abundance and prosperity you want to create with your intuition. So we have to start seeing things in a much more broader way. And we have to realize that there are possibilities like never before. You can really uh, make something of your life and of your creations, especially if you are just gifted to being one of those people that just wants to draw or paint or sing or dance all day. Well, guess what? You can make a very good income being an intuitive channeler. So that's what I would say is that use your creative gifts because they are there to support you. The divine and energies are telling you this is how you do it in this modern society. So next we have one of my favorites, which is the magical practitioner. The magical practitioner, which wizard, magician, magi, or sorcerer is the old school practitioner, the old school one, the one that's going to be uh, building their ring of fire or their, uh, you know, their, uh, their circle of, of magic, and they're going to be entrenched in nature, and they're going to have their staffs and their alchemy and their magic. Most of the time we see magical practitioners or magis, they have many, many, many abilities, okay? Far, uh, fully fledged ones are extremely powerful where they can full on control all elementals, including lightning, wind, rain, fire. Uh, they can summon and bind spirits, demons, jinn, all kinds of entities. They can communicate with the dead. They can bring back the dead. They can um, rain prosperity. They can make it rain physically. They can make it rain other things. So there's all kinds of abilities and powers that have been shown um, throughout our, you know, pop culture and throughout our literature, which talk about the Magi's. The Magi's originally came from history schools and from the Persians. And so we talked about that in our last lecture, which was with the Gnostic teachings. The Magi's were the great, you know, mystics and the keepers of the Gnostic wisdom. And we have a whole legacy of them, why they carried the staff, which was the staff of the Caduceus, which is the Kundalini coiled serpent, which is the life force energy reaching the heavens as above, so below. And the Magi or the magical practitioner is able to summon sigils and high level evokings within just their mind. So they're able to visualize the magical symbols and sigil markings within the astral and ethereal realms, see those sigils and know how to control them. So in my modern day dictionary, I call this accessing the control panel or the source codes of the matrix, where you can start to rewrite the codes and insert your own codes. This is when reality becomes very, very magical. There's a reason why we stress the whole concept of magic, because that is the force that is controlling your reality, whether you know it or not. Um, so a magical practitioner is going to definitely spend a lot of time in nature uh, because they understand that their, their connection and their power comes from nature. So the more in tune they are with nature and with the spirits of nature, nature can do a lot of things. It can warn you of attacks. It can let you know of incoming storms or incoming turbulences. It can protect you from psychic attacks and very dangerous, uh, straight up malevolent, intruding, uh, intruding energies, which has been found the case. You know, if you know how to harness the powers of nature, you can protect yourself physically and etherically. 